So our first section that we are going to start is uh, income tax computation. So first of all, we'll discuss that uh, how an individual income is to be taxed. So first of all, let's begin with the tax year. In UK, for an individual, the tax year starts from 6th April to 5th April. So for this current year, we have 6th April 22 to 5th April 23. This is the current tax year. And we can write it as 22 and 23. And we are studying the rules related with Finance Act 22. So every individual has to pay tax in the tax year 6th April 22 to 5th April 23. Now, another thing is that whenever you have to apply income tax rates, first of all, you have to identify the taxable income of an individual. So first of all, what are the sources of income? So we can classify an individual income for income tax purpose into three types. One is called non-saving income. Another category is saving income. And third category is dividend income. So whatever is the source of earning for an individual, we have to classify it in these three headings. Now, as far as saving income is concerned, it is the interest income on any kind of bank deposit or fixed income securities. Dividend is when you get some return on profit on the investment of shares. So what is included in non-saving income? Other than interest and dividend, any income which is other than interest and dividend is to be classified as non-saving income. So the following item might be part of it. One is the employment income. That is salary and other benefits. Second one might be the business income. That is profit from sole trader and partnership. Either it is a sole trader business or it will be a partnership business. So whatever is the source of income, we have to identify whether it's uh, another might be we have uh, property income that is also known as rental income. When a business is uh, giving properties on rent and any other income might fall in this category. Now, as far as the tax rates are concerned, we have different rates available for non-saving income, for saving income, as well as for dividend income. And for income tax purpose in UK, we follow the progressive tax system. Progressive tax means as income increases, so as the tax rates. It means on low income, there will be low rates and for high income group, there will be high rate. For this particular thing, there are three categories of income tax rate. One is called the basic rate taxpayer. Another one is the higher rate taxpayer. And the third one is additional rate taxpayer. 
Now, as far as the basic rate taxpayer is concerned, the limit is from one pound sterling to 37,700. And this is annual limit. So if anyone is earning taxable income from one pound to 37,700 pound, the person is called a basic rate taxpayer. And if income exceeded from this limit up to 150,000 pound per annum, the person is called the higher rate taxpayer. And above 150,000, the person is called the additional rate taxpayer. And accordingly, we have to identify rates. So we have non-saving income rates, saving income, and dividend income. And these rates will be given to you in the tax sheet, tax and allowance sheet will be given to you in exam where you can check these rates that what is the rate on uh, non-saving income, what is the rate on saving income, and what is the rate on dividend income. So as far as the basic rate taxpayer is concerned, the rate is 20% for non-saving income, 20% for saving income, and it's 8.75%. This is changed from the previous Finance Act where the rate was 7.5%. So there is no change in non-saving income and saving income, but there is a change in dividend income. Previously, it was 7.5%. Now it has been changed. Now for the higher rate category, the rate will be 40%, same as saving income. And as far as dividend income is concerned, the rate would be 33.75%. And that was previously 32.5%. And for additional rate taxpayer, the rate is 45, similar. And here we have 39.35% and that was previously 38.1%. So these are the rates which we have to apply on the basis of whatever income is available for an individual. Now in order to calculate the income tax, first we need to create a pro forma. So in this pro forma, the first column is non-saving income. The second one is saving income. Next one is dividend and then total income. So first of all, we will identify all possible source of income of an individual. Suppose a person is an employee. So we have employment income and this falls in non-saving income category. Then we have property income. So again, property income falls in non-saving income category. If there is any bank interest or interest from other deposits, then this is in saving category. If there is any dividend income, then so these are the source of income. So you have to total these source of income every column. So this is total non-saving income, total saving income and total dividend income. And this is the total income of an individual. So the first category is you need to identify total income of an individual. Tax is not applicable on total income. So we need to deduct relief that is available for an individual. If there is any relief available, let me assume that there is no relief right now available. If there is any relief available, then we will deduct this relief 
and after deducting the relief, we'll get the net income. So if there is no relief, then total income is same as the net income. Now from this net income, we have to deduct personal allowance, which is available for every individual is in, in which is available in UK. And this is the limit is one, two, five, seven, zero. So this is a tax free income. So we have to deduct this from net income in order to arrive at the final value, which is called taxable income. So this is the end of the performer. So after deducting the personal allowance, we'll be able to calculate taxable income and this is the income on which we have to apply our income tax rates. Now, in order to check that whether a person is a basic rate taxpayer or a higher rate taxpayer or an additional rate taxpayer, we have to see this total taxable income. If it is in between one pound to 37,700 pound, the person is called a basic rate taxpayer and accordingly, the person might be higher rate taxpayer or an additional rate taxpayer. Now, first of all, we'll always apply tax rates on non-saving income, then on saving income, and at the end, we'll apply tax rate on dividend income. Now, let's talk about that what is personal allowance and whether this limit is fixed or it might be change. So in UK, for every individual in the tax year 22-23, every individual get a personal allowance, which is a tax free income. That means if anyone has taxable income up to 12570, there is no taxable income. But if income is more than 12570, then we have some positive taxable income on which we have to apply the tax rates and we have to calculate the income tax liability. Now, as far as the limit is concerned, this particular limit 12570 is fixed, but it might be reduced or there is a possibility that it might be zero. So first of all, we need to understand that when personal allowance will be reduced and when it will be zero. Now, personal allowance depends on level of income and in the tax sheet and allowance that has been given that the income limit is 100,000 pounds. So if an individual's income is up to 100,000 pound, full 12570 is available. But as income increases from 100,000 pound, the personal allowance will be reduced. Now, suppose, for example, an individual has income of 1,10,000. So up to 100,000 full personal allowance will be available. But as income is exceeding from 100,000 pound, the personal allowance will be reduced. So how we can calculate the reduction in personal allowance? So reduction in personal allowance is take the income, compare it with the limit that is 100,000. The excess value is 10,000. Multiply or divide, multiply by 50% or divided by 2, you will get the reduction. That is the excess amount, half of the excess amount. So it is 5,000. So reduction is 5,000. So it means the available personal allowance now, it's 12570 deduct 500,000 and you'll get 7570 and that is to be deducted from the net income in order to get the taxable income. Now see, 
as income increases, the personal allowance will be reduced. So, if income is suppose one lakh thirty thousand. Now see, the excess value is thirty thousand, and multiply by fifty percent. So there is a reduction of Fifteen thousand. As total amount is only one two five seven zero, so it means there will be no there will be no personal allowance available, and personal allowance will be zero. It means that if income is double the personal allowance means exceeding 100,000 by double of personal allowance that is 125140. If income is 125140 or more than that, then you can write personal allowance will be zero. No need to calculate anything. Now, income limit is 100,000. But this limit is called ANI, that is called adjusted net income. So whenever you have to check your personal allowance, you have to calculate adjusted net income. In the above pro forma, we have calculated total income, net income, and taxable income. So how we can calculate adjusted net income in order to calculate the personal allowance? So from net income, we have to deduct number one gross personal pension contribution and the second thing is gross gift donation in order to arrive at a value that is called the ANI. Now let's focus on this gross personal pension contribution. There are two types of pension contribution that we are going to study. One is called personal pension contribution and other is called occupational pension contribution. But right now we are focusing on personal pension contribution and we have to deduct gross personal pension contribution. So if net personal pension contribution is given suppose then how we can calculate the gross amount in order to arrive at gross PPC always divide this figure the net figure by 0.8 and you will get the gross PPC figure and if it is written as that pension paid then pension paid is known as the net amount. So you need to find out the gross amount first. So if there is any personal pension contribution, remember that you need to calculate A and I and then you have to check if A and I is more than 100,000, then we need to do something against it. So suppose, for example, non-saving income of an individual is given and uh, it's uh, 1 lakh 20,000 and there is a net personal pension contribution that is 4,000 and we need to calculate taxable income as there is only one source of income so no need to prepare a pro forma just we need to identify total income then net income then taxable income so we have non-saving income that is total income one lakh twenty thousand there is no relief given so relief is zero and that is same net income 
Now we have to deduct from this net income personal allowance and we need to find out the adjusted income. So let's find out the ANI and ANI is net income which is 1,20,000 and we need to deduct gross PPC. So the net PPC given is 4,000. So divide this by 0 0.8 they will get 5,000 gross PPC. So it means the ANI is going to be 1,15,000. Now see, is more than 100,000. So it means my PA will be reduced. There will be a reduction in PA. Now we need to calculate the reduction in PA. So, reduction is the excess value minus the limit and multiply by the 50% mark. So, it means that uh, excess is 15,000. So, the half value is 7,000. 500 and this is the reduction. So the PA available now is 12570 minus reduction. So it's 12570 minus 7500 is 5070. This is the available personal allowance. So we have to deduct this. 5070 from this. So as a result, my taxable value is five zero seven zero. So it is one one four nine three zero. So I need to apply the relevant tax rate on this value. Also remember that if there is any personal pension contribution, then the tax band that we have already discussed that it's a basic rate taxpayer limit and the higher rate taxpayer limit, that band will be increased by this gross PPC value. And this is a benefit because when you increase the band, there will be less amount of tax so what you need to do in the basic limit 37,700, we need to add the gross PPC. So in the above example, my first band value will be enhanced from one pound to 42,700 pound. And then the next category starts with same 5,000 is added to 1,50,000 and it's 1,55,000. So my first category is 1 pound to 42,700 pound. That is the basic one. And the next starts from 42,701 till 1,55,000. This is the higher rate taxpayer. And then the additional one will start from this one. So this is the benefit of having a personal pension contribution. It will reduce the, it will increase the band availability and there will be reduction in the tax liability. Now let's calculate uh, income tax liability. So we'll start from save non-saving income first, then I will add saving income and then I will add the dividend income accordingly. So let's assume that, for example, we have uh, business income, that is trading income of 
21165 this is business income and the same individual is having some employment income as well and that is going to be 3000 in the tax year calculate income tax liability the rates i already told you that what are the rates so as there is only one source of income both trading income and employment income falls in non-saving categories so we don't need to calculate the pro forma just write the total income the first one is trading income the second one is employment this three thousand so we have total income 24165 this is my total income there is no relief so this is also the net income so from this income we will deduct the full value of personal allowance as my income is below 100000 so this is the taxable income and we can say this is taxable non saving income now see, this person is clearly a basic rate taxpayer. Why? Because income falls within 37,700 limit. So we just need to put non-saving rate and the income tax liability. The first rate is 20% that is given in the tax sheet. So simply we have to multiply this by 20 percent rate and we have an income tax liability of 2319 pound now let's assume that the income of an individual is now more than the basic rate band limit let's see so suppose we have trading income of 43765 we have another source of non saving income that is employment income and that is 7000 we have to calculate income tax liability now as we know that we have to aggregate all the source of income so first one is trading income 43765 add employment income 7000 so my total income is 50765 this is the total income so what i need to do i need to deduct the full personal allowance so the taxable income of this individual is 38195 now see the income is more than 37700 so the person is a higher rate taxpayer now the progressive rate system says that up to 37700 we have to apply 20 percent rate and on additional income above the basic band we have to apply the 40 percent rate see how i can calculate the income fall under the basic rate is 37700 so up to 37700 my rate is 20 percent that is 7540 now out of 38195 the basic band is covered so some income is part of higher rate category we need to find out the difference between 38195 and 37700 and the difference is 495 and the rate is for excess income the rate is 40% that is 198 and as a result, my income tax liability is 
थ्री एट Now let's talk about the additional rate taxpayer category. Now suppose we have trading income of one lakh thirty five thousand, along with the employment income thirty three six eight zero. And we need to calculate income tax liability. Again, the same thing. We have to aggregate the income. So, trading income. We have one lakh thirty-five thousand. Employment thirty-three six eighty. Combine these two. Will get one sixty eight six eight zero. This is my total income. Now see, as the income is more than the limit, then personal allowance is zero. No personal allowance is available. So taxable income is also same. That is one sixty eight six eight zero, and as Taxable income is more than one lakh fifty thousand, so this person is called the additional rate taxpayer. And we need to apply as it's a non-saving income. We need to apply twenty percent, then forty percent, then forty-five percent. So let's see. For the basic, up to thirty-seven thousand seven hundred out of this income, it attract. Twenty percent rate that is seven five four zero. Now, the higher one, and the higher one is this is the difference between the first band and the second band, and the difference is this one. It attract forty percent rate, and that is forty four nine two zero, and The leftover income falls in the additional rate category. It's one six one eight six eight zero. And we need to apply forty-five percent tax, eight four zero six. As a result, the income tax liability is six zero eight double six. This is income tax liability. Now let's introduce. another component of income that is saving income there are few savings income which are completely exempt such as interest from national saving and investment certificates so if the income is exempt we will not include this income in the pro forma so suppose we are receiving interest from Uh, national saving and investment accounts receiving from bank receiving from quoted securities government securities all these income are taxable so for saving income the rate for the basic rate taxpayer 20% for higher rate taxpayer 40 for basic it's 20 And for additional, it's forty-five percent, which is same as non-saving income. But there is difference. Difference is that there is a concept called nil rate band, which is available when you have saving income. And this nil rate band is available for 
the basic rate taxpayer if a person is a basic rate taxpayer his 1000 first 1000 of saving income will attract a zero percentage rate that is called nil rate bank and if someone is higher rate taxpayer and having saving income then first 500 of saving income attracts a 0% rate. But if someone becomes an additional rate taxpayer, then the benefit of nil rate band will be not available now. So for a person having saving income, you have to check the status that whether it's a basic rate taxpayer, yes, you can claim an RB up to 1000, multiply this by 0% rate, and for higher rate taxpayer, 500 multiplied by 0% rate. And for additional rate taxpayer, there will be no NRB available. Now, suppose we have two sources of income. One is... employment income and uh, that is 20,000 and uh, interest income that is 15,000. Now we have to calculate the income tax liability. As there are two sources of income available so better is to create the pro forma one is non-saving income another one is saving income and then total so for employment one it's a non-saving income as far as interest is concerned it is saving income so we have a total non-saving income, 20,000. Total saving income, 15. And total income is 35,000. Total and also the net income. Now we need to deduct personal allowance. So usually deduct personal allowance from the first column first. 1, 2, 5, 7, 0. Although we have to see the most beneficial way, but we will deduct normally from the first column. So as a result, the taxable income, that is taxable saving income, taxable non-saving income. So 20,000, 12570. So we have uh, non-saving income, we have taxable saving income and we have total taxable income. Now see, the total taxable income is below 37,700. So it's a basic rate taxpayer. And see, the basic rate taxpayer will get the benefit of NRB up to 1,000. Now, as there are more than one source of income, so we need to apply it in the order. So first we'll see the, we'll apply tax on non-saving income. All the income falls in first band. So the basic rate is 20% for non-saving income. So it's 1486. Now for saving income, we know that there is a nil rate band for the first 1000. Now see, the first 1000 of saving income out of 15,000 would attract a nil rate band and that is 0%. This is the benefit. The next saving income component, so out of 15,000, the leftover is 14,000 and the basic rate is 20%. That is 280. So the income tax liability is 
it's two eight double zero. So income tax liability is four two eight six. Now let's assume that trading income is suppose. Thirty thousand and interest income is fifty eight thousand, and we need to calculate the income tax liability again. The same approach non saving income first, then saving income. And then we need to calculate the total income. So, first of all, we have trading income 30,000, total 30,000. Then we have uh, the interest income that is uh, 58,000. And total income is 30,000, 58,000, and it's 88,000 of total income. So we need to deduct the personal allowance as income is less than 100,000. So full PA is available. So PA is available, 12570. And as a result, my taxable income it's one two five seven zero. So taxable non saving income as well as taxable saving income. So it's now see more than thirty seven thousand seven hundred higher rate category. And this is my taxable income. Now let's apply the rate. First, we need to apply this on non saving income. So this falls in the first band that attract 20% rate 17430 into point two, that is three, four, eight, six. Now, as far as saving income is concerned, as the person is a higher rate taxpayer, so only 500 is available for NRB. So we have to apply NRB and that is zero rather than 1000. And now I have to check how much of the saving income falls in first band? Take out the difference. From the first band, we have covered some portion of non-saving income, some portion of saving income, and the difference left over is 19770. So that attract the basic rate of 20%. Now, 58,000 is the total saving income. So out of 58,000, we have covered 500 in NRB, 19770 in the basic band. My leftover saving income is 37,730. And that attracts 40%. So as a result, 37,730 into 0.4, that is 15092. And as a result, the total income tax liability It's 22,532. 
another example so we have uh, suppose trading income of 145000 we have bank interest received 7850 and we need to calculate the income tax liability so non saving income then saving income now we have trading income 145000 then we have interest income So as a result, the total income is now 152,850. This is total income as well as net income. And we need to deduct personal allowance as income is more than the threshold. So personal allowance is zero. And the taxable income is also same as the total income, net income, and taxable income, all same. Now let's identify the status. So this person is an additional rate taxpayer. Why? Because income exceeds 150,000. So it means no NRB available on saving income. So as usual, we'll apply non-saving income first. The non-saving income is 1,45,000. So up to 37,700. The rate is 20%. That is 7,540. The remaining non-saving income falls in second band. How much is it? It's one zero seven three hundred we need to apply the higher rate that is four two nine two zero now some portion is of saving income falls in second band not in first band so how much falls in second band so out of 1,50,000, non-saving income covered the basic band, some part covered the higher rate band, some part is missing. So saving income, 5,000 falls in second band and the second band rate is 40%. Now, total saving income is 7,850. So from 7850 we have already covered 5000 so 2850 falls in third band and the rate is 45 percent that is 1282 so as a result the income tax liability is 53742 so in this example as the taxpayer was an additional rate taxpayer so there will be no nrb available on saving income it is only available for a basic rate taxpayer as well as for a higher rate taxpayer but it is not available for an additional rate taxpayer